Hello everyone, my name is Mario Martinez and this is Amateur EMS. So today will be the final video on four leads. Very exciting. We're going to be going over uh, premature atrial complexes, premature ventricular complexes, and premature junctional complexes. After this, we're going to get into some quizzes and then afterwards we're going to get into some 12 leads. So I'm extremely excited to kind of be closing off this chapter. For this channel as far as ekg videos go it's been fun if you do like this video check out the ekg playlist you can learn a lot more about ekgs through that and i try to make a comprehensive guide in general so i think you'll really like it anyway first we have to look at our ekg rules of interpretation so there are five main rules we want to look at the p waves are they upright we want to look at the pr interval is it less than 0.2 seconds from the qrs complex how many p waves are there are there more than one we want to look at the QRS complex and make sure it's less than 0.12 seconds and do the P waves and the QRS complexes match up? Do the P waves match with the P waves? Do the QRS complexes match up with the QRS complexes? And do the P waves and the QRS complexes match up with each other? That's very important. Whenever we're looking at complexes, you're going to see that it's going to be more so associated with the sinus rhythm, but it's not always the case. So what are premature complexes? Well. They're early beats that interrupt the regular rhythm of the heart. They're usually benign, but they can show a potential abnormality that may be arising in the near future. And the biggest thing here is the PVCs that you have to watch out for. So PACs, or premature atrial complexes, originate in the atria. PVCs originate in the ventricles, and PJCs originate in the AV junction, so where the AV node is. So for premature atrial contractions, they are early atrial impulses outside the SA node. The characteristics are they have a premature P wave with abnormal morphology. The QRS complex is normal unless aberrant conduction occurs, and it's followed by compensatory pauses. Uh, it's caused generally by stress, caffeine, alcohol, electrolyte imbalances. Here's an image of PACs. Now, it's not the best image, but you can see here we have a sinus rhythm. We have the P wave following the QRS complex, the PR interval. While we don't have the boxes, we can kind of already tell that it's less than 0.2 seconds. The QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. There's only one P wave, one T wave here in a QRS. But occasionally, we have these weird little bumps where we can visualize the P wave here. And that can kind of tell us like, oh, the atrium's acting up. We have a PAC or a premature atrial complex followed by this. So it's normally a normal rhythm, but occasionally we have these PACs appearing. Here's another image of PACs in a sinus rhythm. So we have a normal sinus rhythm, then every now and then we get a PAC. And this one is like a bigeminal one. It's happening every other beat, and it may be leading to a potential arrhythmia. But we can see that the P wave for the most part is less than 0.2 seconds. The QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. We have our T wave, our P wave, our QRS complexes. They would normally match up if it weren't for these PACs that randomly appear. Now, some people may be confused. They may say, oh, is this kind of resembling AFib? Because you have these QRS complexes that while they're generally matching up, they'll have these weird intermittent bursts. And well, we can distinguish where the P wave is. So they wouldn't be, or this wouldn't be a sign of AFib. The next thing that we have here is premature ventricular contractions, or PVCs. Now, these are early ventricular impulses. They have characteristics such as having a wide, bizarre QRS complex greater than 0.12 seconds. They don't usually have a P wave that precedes them. And they're compensatory pauses following the PVC. There's different patterns like bigeminy, trigeminy, couplets, and runs of PVCs. And the causes are ischemia, hypoxia, and electrolyte disturbances. And depending on how many PVCs somebody has at once, we may want to consider, hey, do we need to consider administering an antidiuretic drug? Do we need to call medical control, consider lidocaine, uh, 1.5 milligram per kilograms if it's an adult patient. Of course, follow your local protocols. This usually doesn't happen in children, but uh, depending on your local protocol, you can consider like one milligram per kilogram for a pediatric one. Again, all following your protocols. If you're administering amiodarone, maybe you need to figure out what your dosages are there. But here we can see we have what's generally a sinus rhythm, right? Like these generally match up, but we have this weird abnormality where the ventricle contracts a second time. So you can see here we have our P wave, our QRS complex, our T wave. It's less than 0.2 seconds. Our QRS is less than 0.12 seconds. There's one P wave that matches up with the QRS complex. So everything looks good here. But then we have this weird ventricular beat that has a QRS way greater than 0.12 seconds, more like almost point, uh, let's see, if it's a box for 0.2, I'd say like 0.28 or almost like 0.32 seconds. 
for a QRS complex. So it's a weird, bizarre contraction here. And if you see multiple PVCs following each other, you can start to think, okay, do I need to administer an anti -trichythmic? Maybe I should contact medical control and see what I have to do from there. Do I need to consider lidocaine or not? Do I even have lidocaine available? So here, but it all depends on how many PVCs an individual has and if it's a run on of PVCs or what I mean by that is like multiple PVCs following each other. Anyway, we have what's like a sinus rhythm here. We can see it beats normally. They match up with each other, the R waves. We have one P wave that follows a QRS complex. And then we have our T waves here. But then out of nowhere, we have this brief abnormality right here where we can see that this QRS complex is more like it's like almost like 0.4 seconds or almost like uh, 0.48 seconds. So it's just a very bizarre PVC that's being thrown here. I've actually had a PVC thrown out before. I noticed that I had some chest pain after I drank a rain energy drink. And so I went to a local clinic because I used to work at one at the time. And I asked them to do an EKG on me. Actually, I did an EKG on myself. And I checked out my heart and I could see occasional PVCs that were being thrown out. So I haven't drank a rain since. I'm not saying that it causes it for everyone. It just happened to me. Maybe I was dehydrated. But the next one here is premature junctional contractions. And to define it, it's an early impulse from the AV junction. So we think of the AV node. The characteristics, just like a regular junctional rhythm, is that it's going to have an inversion or absent P wave. It's going to have a narrow QRS complex. It may cause retrograde atrial depolarization, and it's caused by digoxin to toxicity, ischemia, or a lack of oxygen to the heart, and structural heart disease. So we can see here, we have our normal sinus rhythm. It's beating just fine. It's matching up, but uh-oh, there's an abnormality here where we have a fast beat. We have our T wave here. It's less than 0.2 seconds, so that's great. Our QRS complex is nice and tight. It's less than 0.12 seconds. That's only one P wave for every QRS complex, and they match up. That looks great. And if we look here at this beat, all of a sudden we have our T wave here, but we don't have our P wave anymore. And so since we're not able to visualize our P wave, unlike our PACs, then we get, and our QRS complex is still less than 0.12 seconds, we can say, okay, this is a PJC, or a premature junctional contraction. Right here, we can see something similar. So we have our uh, QRSs are matching up, so our R wave to R wave looks fine with our beats. Then we have a premature beat right here, right? We have our P waves here, it's only uh, one, and it's less than 0.2 seconds, so it looks great. Here, it's less than 0.12 seconds for our QRS, nice and tight. But then you see here, we have a flattened, P wave right here, almost like a slight inversion going on. And that can show us that we have a PJC or premature junctional rhythm. It's usually matched up with a sinus rhythm. You can see the heart starts to restart itself and continue beating afterwards, but it had this weird initial B caused by the PJC. So this is a quiz time. If you've watched some of the previous videos, you should have an idea of the next couple rhythms I'm going to display. I'm going to display it. I'm going to give you a second to think about it, and then we're going to talk about what the answer is together. Let me know how you do at the end in the comments below. I'm really curious to see if you guys like this portion or not, because we're going to be doing a couple EKG quizzes from here on out. So I'll give you 10 to 15 seconds. What do you think this rhythm is? Okay, so if we're looking at this rhythm together, we can remember our rules of interpretation. There's no obvious P wave, there's no QRS complex, so we really can't do anything with it. It's almost like a flattened rhythm. And this is a very easy one. You see this a lot in medical shows. This is a systole. Okay, so we have our second rhythm here. I'll let you think about it for a moment. Okay, so taking a look at this rhythm, we can see that there's no P wave involved, right? So we can't check our PR interval, we can't check our P waves, if there's more than one, there's not any P waves. Uh, at the same time, if we look at our QRS complex, it's very bizarre, it's wide, it's about 0.4 seconds, right? And if we look at our boxes, if we go from, let's say, this point right here, or actually, let's start with this point right here, since it's lined up with the box, to this point right here, we have one box, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or really it's like 8.5. So if we take out our phone calculator, right? Let me just pull out mine. 
and we use the box method and we do 300 divided by 8.5 oops oops 300 divided by 8.5 that's going to give us a heart rate of 35 beats per minute so if we have a heart rate of roughly 35 to 36 beats per minute that's going to fall between 20 to 40 beats per minute so it's going to be an idioventricular rhythm. If it was closer, it would be an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Here's our third one. I'll give you guys a second to take a look at it. Okay, so if we take a look at this rhythm, we have one P wave, it's upright, and it's a little bit weirdly spaced out, right? But we have one P wave for every QRS complex. It looks like the QRS complexes match up with each other. The P waves match up with each other. They're just oddly spaced. But if we look at the PR interval, which is what the spacing I was talking about, we can use this one right here because the box is right here. It's about uh, 0.28 or 0.32 for the PR interval. So with everything else being normal, we can safely assume that this is going to be a first degree heart block. Now you need to be really careful whenever you try to diagnose these or you try to assume what these rhythms are. A lot of times we'll think that it's a first degree heart block and it may actually potentially be a third degree heart block, but it's just a little bit too uniform and too evenly spaced every single time for me to consider that. But anyway, here's our fourth rhythm here. I'm going to let you guys think about it for a moment and then we're going to talk about it. Okay, so we can see here, we have our P waves here. We have our QRS complex. The QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds, even though they're a tiny bit hard to visualize, but they pick up more so right here. We can see that there's one P wave for every QRS complex. It's upright, so it looks good. But we have this weird beat here. So if I'm looking over here, I can see that we have about, if I were to use this line right here and go this way, or I could use this line here and go this way. We have one box, two, three, four, 4.6, 4 4.8, I would say. So if we do 300, let's just meet in the middle. 300 divided by 4.7, we have a heart rate at 63 beats per minute. So normally this would be a sinus rhythm, but look, we have this weird abnormality here. Or we have the T wave, we can't discern a P wave, and we have this abnormally large QRS complex. So it is a sinus rhythm with a PVC, or a premature ventricular complex. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know how you did in the comments below, and if you like this kind of content. Understanding premature complexes are crucial in EMS and ALS. Each type has unique ECG or EKG features and treatments needed. Be sure to review the playlist for more on EKG or ECG interpretation. Thank you guys for watching again, and I will see you on the next one. See ya.